Hi, Jason with Unmatched Style here. Today we're going to talk about Node.js. Node.js is a vented I.O. for V8 JavaScript. Uh, we're going to get into this real quick. Let's go ahead and start with their example. Um, first, we're going to pull in uh, the HTTP library that's built into Node.js. This is part of their standard library that ships with the package. After you've already installed Node.js, you have access to this. Let's go ahead and pull Node.js in here, or pull the HTTP library uh, portion of Node.js in. The require statement uh, can pull in the standard library modules, uh, or it can pull in local files. So in our case, we're going to pull in HTTP, which is going to look something like this. But if you wanted to pull in a local file, uh, something in the same directory as this script, uh, my local file, you don't need the .js at the end of it. Uh, just the name of the uh, the module itself would be fine. But let's pull in HTTP. So now we have to do something with this. Uh, literally, you can run just this. Um, but let's go ahead and create the server like they have in their Hello World example. Now, we're not going to use the factory method that they provide. This is a static method that w would return uh, a server object, an HTTP uh, server object. And then this, this method here, or this function, this callback that you're passing, is uh, automatically appended to the list of functions that listen for the request event. Again, this is all evented I.O. So if we look at their uh, documentation, what that means is when you create a new server, uh, here on the left you'll see the various events that you can listen for. Um, the one that we're talking about is the event request. Now, I'm not going to use their shortcut. I want to be as verbose as possible so we can really get a good feel for what's going on. Um, let's go ahead and instantiate the server object. So we're just going to create a new server, a new HTTP uh, server. So now we have our new server. Uh, it doesn't really do anything at the moment, but we can go ahead and have it listen. Uh, let's take a look at uh, how what the syntax is for listen. Um, all listen is is uh, a port and a host name is what we really need. We don't necessarily have to pass it a callback. So we'll have it listen uh, on port 8080 and the loopback interface. Now this will this will run. Uh, it won't do anything because we're not listening for the request. We're not listening for uh, any events whatsoever. But we can go ahead and give you a feel uh, for what's going on here. Oh, it'd be good if we actually spelled listen properly. So now our server is listening on port 8080. Uh, if we go ahead and look at it, nothing's really going to happen. It's actually going to hang up because uh, we're not responding. Uh, it is an HTTP server. It's trying to get the request. Um, that's obviously not going to work. Let's go ahead and kill it. Well, let's head back to the documentation and let's listen for that request event. Now to add um, an event listener, uh, all you do is use the on method. So server dot on request you'd almost le read this as a sentence right uh, and now the on method takes a callback in the format specified by that event emission uh, this is an, an event emitter model or event emitter pattern that they're using um, so the two arguments that are going to be passed automatically to our function to our callback you can see here in the documentation our request and response so you could abbreviate this, but we'll go ahead and be as verbose as we can. Um, now, each one of these, uh, each one of these objects that are passed in to our function are also documented. So the first thing that we're going to get uh, is a server request, the request the client has made to us. This is all cleaned up through the Node.js uh, HTTP server object. Uh, we're getting a nice clean request. There's nothing dirty in here that we have we would have to clean up. Um, and we can get things like the URL, the method, uh, post, get, put, delete, all that sort of thing. Uh, you can also get the headers that are coming in. 
Uh, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to short circuit this and get it looking like their example. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the response. Uh, let's go ahead and look at their their example up here. Um, we're going to write a header back to the client, back to our browser. Oops. So let's write that header. Response dot write head. We want to send it a 200 response code, which means everything's kosher. Let's send it some headers. Text plane. Now I have an additional uh, method here that isn't in the example. Write. Um, write, you can you can use this uh, as many times as you want. Uh, you can call this inside of a loop or what have you. You can only call response.end once. Uh, we're not going to use response.write at the moment. We're just going to get it to say hello world to our browser. Now if we run this again, what we'll see here in our browser is hello world. Uh, this is a text plane content type, so we're seeing it in the in the pre-formatted uh, text there. We can change this to text. HTML. Put a little H1 around our response. And it'll be f formatted properly. Of course we have to stop the server. Restart it. There we are. Hello world in HTML. Okay, we're going to keep the HTML uh, here. And I'm actually going to break sort of the uh, the whole design um, idea behind Node.js, I'm going to do a synchronous call to pull in an external file. Uh, the reason is I, I want to show you a little bit more about the, the request and the response mechanism instead of taking time to write an invented uh, streaming mechanism to pull in a static file. We'll just go ahead and use their synchronous capabilities here. Um, now this is going to require us to pull in another module. Um, let's pull in the file system module. Now we have access to um, all these file system functions. Um, a lot of these are just static functions. You can use them however you want to use them. Uh, for instance, we can do a file system read file sync. Um, this is a synchronous version of the asynchronous uh, read file, which you actually see up here. Uh, file system read file. Uh, this is the the asynchronous um, style, which you should prefer when you're using uh, Node.js. But we're going to use read file sync. Uh, so what you can do, since this is a static function built right into this module, uh, we can simply read file sync and we have a local file in this same uh, directory called static.html. I'll pull it into view here. Uh, this is our static HTML file. You can see it has a very simple form that we're going to use uh, to test some more of the request and response functionality. Uh, so let's pull that in. Now if we restart our server we have a nice form uh, that we can send it a value, submit it, and it'll post back to our server. Now what we would want to do uh, is say this is a login form or, or whatever sort of form, contact form, uh, that you want to capture the response. You don't want to capture it when it's not posting. So if we check out the request object in documentation, go back to HTTP server request, you'll see that we can test the request method, which will be the get, post, whatever. So if we simply add a conditional, you can test uh, to see if this has been posted back. Now all we're going to want to do, um, we can actually get a little hacky here and add the header above. and using the response write as our console effectively. Um, we 
we can test and print out whether or not our form has been posted back. Now if we restart our server, you don't see this message. Uh, you don't see this response right is not called because a request wasn't a post type. Um, now if we simply submit our form, our form has been posted. Now this is where you could uh, you could insert this into the database, you could handle these these form elements, uh, you could process that data. Um, now this is just a very trivial introduction using basically their hello world uh, example to give us um, something to look at, something to play with. Uh, you don't want to be doing the the read file sync operations unless you absolutely have to. Um, but then there are all these other modules that come standard with Node.js. Uh, of course, we explored the file system one, um, the file system module. Uh, you can do all sorts of things with that. Um, you can also do uh, a DNS, uh, URL manipulation, path manipulation, uh, query string parsing and generation. Um, and you can also write your own modules um, and do a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And actually, there are a lot of cool libraries out there for Node.js that you'd certainly want to check out. So I hope you enjoyed this. This has been our uh, brief introduction to Node.js. Thanks for watching.